Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to do parameterization uh, within uh, SimLab. You need to start from sketch. So this is where you can start sketching it on the grid that you see. So I'll just put it as the in the 2D dimension and then now we can get the uh, view here and you can we can now since we have a radial machine so I started with the circles but you can see the flow will be similar so once you have it you need to create a variable for each dimension so after getting all the three circles that I need so now after you need to go into dimension and then measure it and make it as a variable so create variable give its name and then give its dimension here this will give a uh, create a new dimension for you and similarly i'll do it for the all the three circles here which are needed for us to define the what is the shaft uh, rotor mid diameter and then the outer diameter of your rotor So it's the similar process as what I did for all the three circles to create three different dimensions. Um, that's what is a one, two, and three is here. And then the next one will be, our, we just need a part of our motor uh, because we wanted to use the periodicity. So we can just get a line uh, with the reference and then also the line at an angle so this I don't need a dimension here so I'm not making a creating a variable and I'll get a new one another line which I can I'll put it at an angle which uh, represents our periodic angle which is nothing but the one pole that I can get in here sorry it's the half of the pole and then I'll just do the symmetry after So you can remove the unwanted ones using the trim or break tool that you see here. And then once we have this, now we are going to do the inner um, geometry creation. So I'm just making the angular uh, span for the half of the pole as a parameter so that you can also use that for an, uh, for any other optimization or if you want to expand it and make it into a different pole pair machine so you can just change change your angle and then also the corresponding dimensions so that you get different number of poles for the same machine and now i'm uh, going to create uh, an inner magnet here so i'm starting with the pole uh, to get a line in here and then from there I'm going to create the magnet so this is just the reference distance from where my uh, magnet starts within the rotor Uh, this is to control the distance of my magnet layer from the origin. And this is the angle parameter that I'm creating here. To the origin, how at how much angle our uh, first magnet is placed. So that's that's what is the angle that you're seeing in here. And then now to get the magnet here, 
uh, we are going to use we are going to create a rectangle so for that I'm using this polygon that is there with four edges that you can control actually uh, so since is you can see so you can you can just move it and then adjust the angle at which you have randomly and then you can also parameterize it after so that it, you can uh, adjust it exactly where you want for the magnet and then once you have you can also now parameterize the dimensions of your magnet also so right right now uh, yeah, I'm parameterizing the angle at which your um, magnet is placed with respect to the reference line, which is this one. And then once you have this, I created another uh, parameter for the angle at which the magnet is placed. And then next one is the parameter for your uh, dimensions of the magnet. So that I'm, uh, this is the width of the magnet that I'm naming it as DX and then the other one is the sorry I just yep and then the other one is the height of the magnet which I'm going to do as a DY And then this also I'll be creating it as a parameter so that you can use it for your de uh, design of experiments or for your optimization based on your constraints here. And then the next one is um, we just so for this um, example that I considered so we have a completely curved uh, edges here for the air duct not like a, a, a different shape at the edge so that's why I was using like with the center and the uh, outer edge points for the curves I'm creating the curve on both the edges for the magnet and once we have it so this is this is a complete half uh, pole geometry and now all we need to do is we need to have another one as a symmetry so you can go with the mirror tool here and then I created the other one with reference to the reference line here now you have your uh, rotor one pole and then uh, to get your complete Faces. All you need to do is realize sketch. I'm going to go a little back so that I can show. So yeah, and then you click all faces. You'll get all your faces. But we need to rotate the rotor so that it goes to the reference. So for that, you can use this transform. So that's why I came back. I'm using the transform uh, tool that we have it in here so that I can rotate my rotor so that this end of the reference comes to my um, original X aligns with my X axis. So that's what I'm doing it in here. So I'm doing a little operation to rotate. And then, yeah. So I'm selecting all the lines and now you'll have your uh, transformation tool which where you can move in X, Y direction or in the angular direction also. I moved it to the other side and now I'll just rotate it so that it, it aligns with my um, X, X uh, axis in the positive direction.
for this I'm showing it only for the rotor and I'm importing the stator but you can draw your stator also so I'm just importing the stator step as a sketch and then I'm going to all you need to do is again you just have to right click and complete all the faces here realize sketch and then all faces and then you'll get your stator here you have your parameterized model you'll uh, you'll see all your um, uh, faces after you do a realize faces in here so for example if I show it here and the multiple faces and once you click on all faces you will have all the um, CAD faces generated for all if each and every face of your motor and once you have this the other thing I wanted to show is all the geometric parameters that you created in here you can see it under this small window and you can see all the CAD parameters will be here which you can just double click on your sketch and once you have it uh, you'll see all the values here which you can change and then change your dimensions of your geometry but do it before you mesh your model so that it gets applied on this particular geometry and then after that you can mesh your model and once you have this here um, the next step is to complete your physics. Thank you for your attention. In the next video, you're going to see how to set up design of experiments and run optimization using the parameters that are created using the sketch and also the physical parameters. Thank you.